Hey, we're Koi Fly Creative, and we're obsessed with all things production, marketing, business, and helping you navigate the life of a creative leader. We're here to unveil the more unexpected aspects of leadership. We don't stray away from the real talk. We go through it all with influential leaders from all walks of earth. So pull up a seat and have your morning coffee with us. This is The Morning Cast. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. Welcome back. Welcome back to The Morning Cast. How are you guys feeling? Feeling good. I've missed missed this place. Me too. Yeah. It gives me a reason to clean my room. (laughs) Top of the morning to you. (laughs) <laughs> so what do we got going on today yeah uh last time we did this i think was june i'm a little rusty yeah we got a new face here hi to- <laughs> <laughs> should, we, uh, should we reintroduce ourselves to everyone sure hey um i'm aaron i'm the associate producer at koi fly i'm dave i'm the director of production at koi fly i'm leslie i'm the director of content here at koi fly I'm Michaela. I'm the senior marketing coordinator at Koi Fly. And I'm Stacy, and I'm at Koi Fly. <laughs> <laughs> so who's, uh, who's up today? That's, it's me. I'm interviewing um, one of my friends from college who is a science teacher at a private school. Nice. School's almost back in session. Yes, it is. So that's exciting. Maybe. And what are some like highlights we can look forward to in this interview? Um, well, she talks a lot about how she set up her remote uh, school classroom nice. and how she speaks to her children. And I'm not sure if this made it, I haven't seen the final edit, but I know she does talk about how on those days when things are crazy, how she has to take a break and maybe put a little sign up on her computer and say, the teacher will be back shortly. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I love it. Um, She's just really like a real human being. And um, like, I, you know, I don't think I started crying in this interview, but I was like, wow, this is like emotional, you know? A digital, we are open sign. Yeah. I like it. She was teaching during um, the pandemic. So this is a little bit back in the day, this is June. um, And she actually was teaching during the riots that happened in Philadelphia. So it's extremely interesting stuff to me because I don't know a lot about teaching. I've never done it before. I yeah. Think it's a super moving interview. For sure. Awesome. Should we get yeah, into it? Yeah, let's do this. Oh, let's do this. Look what I found. Roll it. Hello. Hi, Karen. Hi, Stacy. Introduce yourself, if you would, to the many watching and tell us what you do. My name is Karen Cherubini and I'm an educator in Philadelphia. Uh, I've been teaching for 25 years in the city, and um, I teach science to third through fifth graders, and I advise upper school students in independent studies in various other areas. Okay, so tell me, if you could, like, what has changed for you, like, and probably a lot, but like, so pre- all the stuff that's been happening to what's happening now, what's the difference? This journey is unreal and it's pretty cool to have a chance to talk about it with you, first of all. Um, You know, teachers in general have a very strong sense of place and their classrooms in particular. Any teacher will tell you, you spend a lot of time and energy getting your classroom exactly the way you want it before the kids arrive. And everything that you lay out and structure in your classroom has purpose. And it helps your day flow. It helps the kids do their best. And, you know, and then one day we were told, okay, well, we're all going home. We're gonna, you're going to teach from home. And so the first thing is, okay, like my first, my first response is I can do that. Okay, no problem, right? I'm just going to do what I do from home. I got it. I got this. But then I stood in my classroom and I'm like, what do I bring home? I literally, I stood in, my classroom is amazing. 
and I stood there for probably 20, 25 minutes, kind of frozen, like trying to reflect on what do I need from here that I can bring to my home? We tend toward hands-on. So when this pandemic started, kids were working on robotics. They were building simple machine models with Legos. All of those things touched by hundreds of little fingers every day and have to be manipulated and hands-on. Take that out of my curriculum and my head just kind of spins, right? It's my job to just provide these kids with learning opportunities and put something in front of them that they can tinker with, that they can explore. After a couple of uh, lessons, lesson planning, I realized I have to shift in a much bigger way than I had really thought about. The first trip home, I took home a bunch of things that I, I probably haven't even touched. I have uh, boxes of files and all kinds of stuff. Brought my journals home. The books, I was paralyzed because I have an amazing library. I can't bring all the books home. So they stayed. Um, <laughs> oh, here's actually the first thing um, is that we have a lot of live animals in the program. And so I had to find homes for and or bring home to my house two box turtles, a dove, a salamander, two blue tongued skinks, a Russian tortoise. The the list goes on. It took a couple of visits back to campus to really focus on what learning materials are going to help my teaching right now. What can the kids use? What can I use? And, um, and that's still a big question. I mean, what I always hear now is because we've been so virtual for so long, what's it like going on three months now? We've been virtual. Um, everyone's like, how can you recreate an experience? Like, how can you Help me recreate an experience virtually is what, what we get to hear at Koi Fly. So that's why we're, we do live streams and try to find out a way to make them as experiential as possible. But so for you, I mean, science, like I remember my science classes, like when the, the science teacher would like pour something and pour something and I got to do that too. Like, you know, and then it would like spray and do all those cool things. Like, what have you done? Like, how are you able to like recreate that? Still struggling a lot with that question. And a lot of our work over the summer will be to think more deeply about it. So we're actually getting a full time week's worth of training for remote learning, followed by three weeks of a coach helping us rewrite our curriculum. I, I have to say that one thing that has happened through all of this is that I have never really seen a group of people step up in a way that literally every single person in my learning community has done over the past couple of months. So what is your classroom like now? Is it just like this? Are you, do you Zoom your kids or like, what do you do? I do. We do. We actually do Google Meet. And when I go live with the kids, like I can't sit still for an hour. So I'm moving around. So I've really created um, several different spaces. This is a fifth grade lesson, urban, suburban, and rural environments. We were looking at water quality and looking at um, how each type of uh, each type of community has different challenges and learning how to test for water water quality, recognize, um, using observational techniques. We were going to get into chemical water testing, take a trip to the Wissahickon. Um, we actually had to cancel our trip to the South Philadelphia Wastewater Treatment Facility. Like, what have you found, like, you know, with the kids? Like, how are they responding to this? Like, are you able to keep their attention? So it's been all over the place. I have mostly asynchronous lessons posted. I'm using Google Classroom. I'm using so many apps that I have just learned. There's Loom and there's, you know, obviously there's Zoom and there's Flipgrid and there are so many amazing tools out there. Um, and you want to experiment and learn about them. But then keeping track of all your lessons 
for me, it's been really hard because I'm like, oh, where is that lesson? I know I did a lesson on this. I cannot find it. Is it on Zoom? Is it on Flipgrid? Where is it? <laughs> and I have tried a whole bunch of different experiments with the asynchronous learning. Like, okay, kids, now pause here and go do this. Or we're going to take a look and do some scientific drawing. And I want you to think about details such as patterns, textures, authentic color. And our admin group decided that it was the best thing for the specialists to have office hours. So it's like a flipped classroom model. I don't know if you've seen that with your kids where the teacher does the lecture and the kids do the note taking at home. And then when you come into class, that's when you get a chance to ask your questions and really process that. With the kids in general, like, are there certain types of kids that get this? Are they all getting it? Are there, you know, are there kids that are like, you know, not getting it at all? Like, and then do the parents then contact you? Like, how does that all work? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, there are, I have 185 students. And in the beginning of this, I was getting across all of my students, I was getting probably at best 20% participation. What? Right. And because we had to figure out all of these details. So this, if, if you're a student in my school, you have eight to nine teachers. And so each teacher is trying to get their content out and trying to engage the student with the learning that they feel passionate about, that they um, want to bring. There was no standards. There's no like, you should teach like this. You guys were just like on your own, like go teach. It's pretty brand new, right? Yeah. So we were given some emergency training and then kind of given permission to explore. Like you are not expected to stick to your curriculum right now. So it started off 20%, did it get better? And it got better, it got a lot better. Once the kids started to understand the routine and they were able to, I mean, they don't all have the tech skills, right? So some students, they can navigate their way through any of it, all of it easily. Some of them have no idea. Some of them don't have ask access. So one of the first trainings we had was about equity in our programming, which led us to the asynchronous piece. Mm. Um, I mean, we have kids, I've had kids tune in from Italy, from Germany, um, because their families went home, right? Um, and they can't come, their hours are way different than ours. Um, they're still able to participate which is pretty cool. Um, it's gotten a lot better. Um, the whole, the, the funniest part to me is, now my, my, I'm very lucky to have an amazing department head and she also happens to be a mom of two young students, one of them in my, in my science class. And her perspective has been really helpful. Like nothing should be mandatory for anybody right now we're in a disaster, right? Mm -hmm. So let the kids take what they want and leave what they just can't handle. And that speaks to me. I believe that that is how we should approach this. Yeah. What happens with these kids? Like, do they have grades? Do they move on? Like they are all moving on. Yeah. They are not getting grades. Not at the level that I teach the things that I can do. I'm trying. <laughs> I am trying. What's the best thing that you're doing right now? Like, what's the thing that's getting the most, like, that you like doing the most and the kids love doing the most, you're the most proud of? I'm going to take that into two, two, different, two different questions. The, the thing that was the most attractive to the kids, the biggest turnout, um, we have a tradition of inviting, we happen to have a NASA aerospace engineer on our school committee, and he was doing a space study with fourth grade. And he came into our live meeting to answer questions for the kids. And that was just amazing. Awesome. He was fantastic with the kids. They, their, their questions were brilliant. Um, 
and it was it was a great day. It just because you could feel the community. Right. That wasn't your proudest moment. So that well, I have to say my proudest moment, and um, it's happened a couple of times. Is it's about time for me to go live, and I'm. It was hard for me to to start with like the whole face on the camera thing. Before this, I never would have done this with you. I would have been like, no way. I know. I was so shocked when you said yes. <laughs> I was like, I didn't say anything. I'm like, oh, nice. So I feel like my biggest accomplishment over the last couple of months is going live when I'm actually standing here saying, okay, I have to stop crying. Hmm. I have to pull myself together because of whatever is going on out there. Whatever pandemic, whatever you know, rioting and, and fires and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take some deep breaths and I'm gonna get on with these kids because that's what I do. And it's so good what, for so, me and it's good yes. for them. So let's go let's go there because it's a pretty good transition, but I know your the school that you work in is in the burbs, right? And then you are actually in Center City, Philadelphia. Well not Center City, you're in Art Museum area in Philadelphia. So my school is technically in Philadelphia. Is it okay? It's in Philadelphia. But it's not. It's removed from Center City. Cool. So tell me about like, you know, one of the questions I always ask everybody is like, being vulnerable. I know you're a person that's so vulnerable. Anyway, like I feel like you always talk with your heart and just just naturally. But like, what's been happening lately? It's bringing out like, I mean we have a very sensitive group and every day we have to check in like every day we're checking in like how are you are you okay today like how are things going um and i know that you feel things the way i feel things so tell me about what happened like last week and like over this time like even like when this thing first started i'm sure there were moments where you were like feeling vulnerable and like how you did pull yourself out i mean the first is incompetence i've been teaching for a very long time and all of this I feel like a first year teacher. Like I actually had first year teacher nightmares, which I have not had in a very long time. I'm pretty settled in what I do. I'm comfortable with it. That is all gone away, right? And so it's humbling and, it, um, and it's hard and it's tiring. So um, to really remind myself how I'm going to fail and it's a good reminder from the student's perspective, every day is hard. Every day they're learning and they're failing and they're also winning. So I try to just think about what I would say to the kids and say it to myself, like, yeah, you might have really screwed that up, but you get another chance tomorrow, right? And going live with the kids, it, it's an equalizer. So, you know, I would sit right here with them on my screen, be like, Hey, I'm going to ask you guys to lead the conversation today. And then I'll jump in a little later because I'm just not ready. And they'll be like, okay, I have something I want to talk about. And it all washes away. Oh and you God. remember why you're doing what you do. Oh my God. That could make me cry just thinking about that. Um, are you, so are you, is it okay to be vulnerable with your kids? On occasion. Yeah. Um, probably on those days where I am, um, stuttering to get myself out there right and I'm like hey kids like how's your day going I'm not having a very good day and they'll be like oh Karen what happened you know and just so much empathy often don't respond they're quiet and the more kids that come into the meeting the more quiet it is right which is weird because they have right? that I'm like probably, yeah because I'm looking at I'm like you you <laughs> you like you're not quiet. Speak <laughs> up. Yeah. I know you're not a quiet kid. Yeah. I, want, I want to hear you right now. And yeah. so I think it's hard for them too. Yeah. Um, so they don't actually, so far they haven't really responded to me in an emotional response, just in a very practical and distracting sort of way right like what was last week like like with all the riots and or uh, not last week this week no. Monday, i know Tuesday. it's this week i don't even know yeah. what week it is. it's so that was the hardest yeah um, i can't even imagine my classroom my remote learning classroom is on the third floor in the back of the house and 
our back deck is, so we're situated between the Art Museum and City Hall. So we can hear everything from the back deck. We, my daughter and I, she's a, a sophomore in high school and um, we just can't get enough. We want to know everything that is happening with this movement and we want to be positive and, and cheer people on and we want to um, represent the good fight and try to be aware and alert also at the same time for our safety. So we have these peaceful marches and demonstrations and amazing community. And that news helicopter <laughs> is following the march and um, then the sirens are going. So you've got the helicopter, you've got the sirens. And then for several days, the city was literally burning. Wow. And so the smoke was coming and we're like, okay, something else. We're like, okay, that's a new smoke stream, right? Yeah. So we're like on, we're trying to get information. What's where, on fire? Like, do we need to get out of here? Oh my God. Do we need to go? Are we safe here? And it goes from that extreme to like, should we be packing our bags and finding a place to go? Or should we be making our signs and going out and marching? Right. And so, oh, right, we're in a pandemic. So you're like, okay, all right, so let me take a couple steps back. I guess we really, right? Like, here are all these things happening. Like, we didn't cancel the pandemic for the civil rights movement. Right. It's all happening. Like, in that scenario, like, do you still have class? Like, what? Okay, so, right, that was... Um, one of the days. That was one of the days. I'm like, I'm just standing here. It's like, I go live at 1230 and, and I'm, I'm like, it's 1230 and I have tears pouring out of my face. Or you're, or you're crying. Like, what was it? Because you were I'm sad. Crying? Yeah. I had to, we had to shut the back door. We had to close because, oh, also the tear gas was close enough that we had to close all the windows in the house. Um, and some of our high school kids were there. They were there on the highway in the peaceful demonstration, and next thing we know, there's tear gas everywhere. So we're like, okay, we have to shut the windows, we have to, um, and then doing all this and then like, oh, I, I have to go live, right? So can't you just say like, hey kids, Karen's not coming in today, like, what, like. I don't have any way to say that though. Like put like a little teddy bear in for a substitute teacher and just like, watch a movie. I actually have my whole, so I'm just sitting here. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I'm so here's my, this is my fifth grade science journal. We're studying aquatic macro invertebrates, right? So here's the lie. Wait, where's my little post-it? Here's the lie. I put my... Oh, sorry, technical problems. <laughs> I put my journal out. It's, it's my document camera. You're going to see this. And this post-it, and then I... I just had my audio and video off. So I could hear them in the meeting for 20 minutes. It took me to breathe deeply, to stop crying, to get myself together. And I hear them like, well, where is she? Like, what is she even doing? Technical problems. Like all this, they were so good. These kids were so good. And finally, I took a breath. I put on my video and I said, hey guys. But I think, you know, that's an extreme. I mean, the fact that you have to be face to face with kids that you're teaching, that's huge pressure. That's huge pressure during this time when all this other stuff's going on. But I do think on some small level, like everybody is dealing with a little bit of that. Like I got on with my team on Monday. We have a project in that's based in Philadelphia with a Philadelphia based, you know, declaration of independence based company. And we met with them and they were all crying. So we started crying and then, cause Monday was like one of those like, oh my God days. So I got on with my team. We have a meeting every Monday and I'm like, you guys, let's just talk. Let's just talk about this stuff because I don't think any of us are gonna be able to work right now. Right. You know? exactly. And I don't expect any of us to work right now because this is my company and I don't want to do it. So I can't imagine you guys are gonna want to do it. So like we talk about that stuff, but I think on some level, like there's so many people in the world 
that are dealing with the same thing right now where it's like, I know I have to work. I know I also have to raise my kids. I know I also have to teach my kids while they're home. I know I also have to perform daycare while I'm working full time, while a pandemic's happening, while riots are happening, while, you know what I mean? Like, and it's almost like this thing where it's like, how much resilience do you have? Like, how are you able to then get on the call? I just, I love the kids and they're showing up to interact and to have some sense of normal. And so if I can give them that for 20 minutes or an hour, I should do that. Um, but also I want to do that. Recording guys. I'm going to record. Like, is she amazing? Yeah. Oh so powerful. Incredible. The level of dedication to the students is clearly evident right from the beginning. She's one of those people with like a big, huge heart anyway, and you can just kind of feel it like, you know, craziness. Yeah, it's amazing how she starts off the interview talking about bringing home like classroom pets. And by the time we get to intermission, she's talking about you know, like the civil unrest and the movement and everything in between is just, it's insane. A great observation. I also had a chuckle at the, the getting classroom pets because one of our clients who is in education, it had the same issue. They have like oh, really? an entire lab of live pets. And the biggest thing was like, how are we going to get these animals? And the, the kindness and the dedication of teachers at such like a minimal level to be like, I'll take that tortoise. I'll take that beer to drag in. <laughs> and now, little did they know that was going to become like their family. <laughs> or like four or five months, their family pet. Yeah, imagine if they have to give them up now. They've had them for like five months. Like, yeah. Uh, There's another whole room where she had like a bunch of her animals. And I'm like, but we just didn't have time. We were just chit chatting for too long. But the other part I thought was interesting is because you did record this in June and it's been a couple months. And now we're, it's kind of funny how timely it still is because now we're in that back to school session again and it's still the same troubles it's still the same nervousnesses you know process these it's all still so relevant which is a shame that we're still here like we're like i think a little desensitized to it now because we've been doing it for so long and like i did get out to get my hair done the other way i was like you know at that point like without any but um but yeah i mean like i think we're a bit a smidge desensitized but I mean, it's uh, not my, like Dave said the other day, it's like Groundhog Day, you know? So, yeah. I mean, Stacy. Questions, really? Yeah. Is her school going back in person? Do you I know? don't know. I should follow up with her just before we send this out, like to see. I feel like that would be an interesting. Yeah, I should see if she, they're going back. I would doubt it. Especially after the training this summer? Yeah. 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 They were already sort of like gearing up for remote. Yeah. What do you think, Michaela? I mean, you're almost out of, just right out of school. Yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, even like going back to the animals, that didn't even cross my mind. And I have two younger brothers, one uh, going to seventh grade, and then the other one is in college. So it's like the one who's in seventh grade, like science classes, I can so picture that, but I didn't even think about like the animals and like me going back to like seventh grade. Like I loved all that hands-on stuff. Like that's so cool and I feel like so crucial for them but I remember when uh Karen said in the video that she was having like 20 percent participation participation it was like 185 students like I guess that that does make sense that they're like not wanting to since it's online which like makes me so sad it kind of breaks my heart but she's handling it so incredibly well yeah, I mean, and the fact that like she puts that little technical difficulties <laughs> sticky <laughs> back up when she's crying like under her desk, it's like, man, I don't even know. That's got to be, that's a whole other level of like trying to like work while things are happening outside, like tear gas that you have to close the windows for. And I, I can't even like imagine putting myself in that position to have to teach like in 2020 with everything going on. Yeah. And like pushing through in the middle of everything is, you know, you gotta, you gotta remember that and appreciate the teachers for what they've done and what they are continuing to do. Yeah, and I mean, it's like, I don't know if people understand how much work actually goes into this remote thing for the teachers, you know, that's like, in addition to the fact they don't have their classrooms, all the things that they're given when they walk into a school and then 
they have to figure it all out remotely. And there's really not a ton of instruction coming down. Like, here's what you need. Like, and she had no curriculum. They're just like, do whatever they're going to, you know, mm -hmm. vibe with, you know what I mean? <laughs> so she had to kind of figure it out. And that's not every school. That's her school, which is sort of a more looser school, but still, I'm, you know, it's like, here you go, figure out your curriculum, try and get as many kids as possible, motivate the children. Don't worry about what's happening in your life. You know, right outside. Yeah. I just it's craziness. They should be paid what the it? most. They should be paid the most. Yes. Don't you think? Yeah. Should we I jump in quick? <laughs> <It's good. laughs> but I am excited to get started on the next half of this interview. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's jump back How into about that. Oh, uh, good, good. Last All time. right. See you Bye. guys in a minute. And women, like, and I know, like, so my whole thing was when this first started, I'm like, I know that women-owned companies are going to get through this shit because we deal with a lot of stuff. So how do you do it? Like when, when you get off the call and you still have to prepare your work and then all the other stuff. Yeah. I, um, I definitely have been very focused on my self care. So I'm doing things that I want to do every day. And, you know, I might have to dismiss my family, but they're okay. They're big enough. You know, they're grown enough that I can say I need to do this for me right now. And, and then I fill up my bucket of patience and I come back out, right? Like I, um, the garden, the community garden is still open. It's essential because we grow food. And so that's been a huge sanity check. The beekeeping that have the beehives are over there doing all that work has been really therapeutic. But like, what have you, like, how has it been with the parents? Like, I, I need to get into this. You have parents who are like, this is way too much work for my kid. Why are you giving them so much work? Same amount of work for another family is not enough. Like, my kid needs more. You're not engaging them enough, right? So you have the entire spectrum. What type of work is that child producing? What focus are they able to sustain right now? You know, it's hard for some kids in the classroom. For some of those kids, it's impossible at home. They really, they just cannot focus. And so how are they getting their work done? You know, I was getting a little punchy and I, I'm doing all these lessons, but I find them a little bit dry and kind of rote. And so I'm like, all right, we're gonna do make your own bird feeder. So I'm pulling out the old, get something out of the recycle bin, cover it with peanut butter, roll some like crushed up breakfast cereal in it so you can hang it in your backyard and watch the birds come. So, cause we're doing a bird study and I'm imagining all these parents cursing at me cause their kids are spreading peanut butter all over the kitchen, right? They're like a disaster. Um, so I reached out a little bit after that and, and the feedback I got was, you know what? Happy kid, happy me. Don't even worry about it. Awesome. I feel, and you probably do too, and I don't know what it's like in your school, but I feel like there's a political divide, like no other political divide. I try like really hard to somehow stay in the middle-ish, um, but it's hard. Um, how do you approach that? Like, do the kids ask you questions about this? Like, are, is, are your classrooms diverse? Like, do you talk about systemic racism? Is that like too big of a thing to approach with them? Like we do. Um, I am, I'm in a Quaker school, not by chance. This is what I wanted. And that is because I fully believe, I, I am Quaker, but I also, I fully believe in the values of Quakerism. And it really makes it easy for me to speak my mind, to feel like I'm with my people and that it's okay for me to say what needs to be said. So yes, I do engage the kids. Um, honestly, I haven't done it since we've been home because the conversations we have in the classroom surrounding these issues, and in my case, I teach about environmental justice and helping the kids bridge that understanding between the social justice work that they're already doing in other parts of the school into sustainability and 
why, why do environmental issues disproportionately affect people of color? Right. Oh, well, very specifically, here are some things that we can look at. And even in the classroom on a normal day, those are emotional conversations. So I didn't do that with them this year. This is my fifth grade in particular that um, does this normally. And then we talk about um, things like waste management and how the U.S. would send all of the recycling to China, except China said no more, right? So we can't just throw away our trash. Now it's the poor countries and the poor neighborhoods who are getting the waste and they're getting, um, you know, more of um, the environmental degradation that other wealthier communities are not going to stand for. Hmm. Um, and those very emotional pieces, I could not bring myself to bring to the students during this time. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, it's, it's so fragile out there in the world. And I also, I feel like, you know, we're, we're gonna, there's some kind of an action that I want to do. I just wanna make sure it's the right action. And I wanna make sure I don't start something that I can't finish. Um, but I also don't wanna be scared to do something for fear that I'm gonna do it wrong because I feel like I might do something wrong. You know what I mean? Because I'm a white person and I've grown up in an extremely white area and I know that there's a lot that I don't know that I need to learn. Um, but I, even having conversations with my college kids, like, you know, I don't even know the right words to say to them. I've been lucky to get a lot of professional development and learn a lot through the Quaker community and um, and honestly, like just you identifying yourself as someone who isn't planning to get it right in the beginning is huge. You know, like, yes, I don't know what to do, but I wanna learn, that's the right place to start. And I don't know, you might have to weed this part out, maybe not, but we have gotten statements from the Academy of Natural Sciences, the Franklin Institute, the Philadelphia Zoo, um, Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, um, Temple University, you probably got that one as a parent. Um, we support, many of them said the Black Lives Matter organization, um, but others said it without identifying that particularly. All of these organizations came out to say that we absolutely will stand behind and support this movement in whatever way we can. And that we're open, really, that we're open to learning how. And so that's the work we have now. Like, What else can people do to help teachers right now in general, like to help support you guys? What can we lay people do? I, I really don't know the answer to that question. Um, I think the one way, it seem, might seem a little backward, but to think about when you're homeschooling your kid, you think about your child as a learner and try to understand them as a learner. Because we have kids who they're just going to outline, I want to get this done as quickly as possible. And some kids will labor over it with amazing, gorgeous detail and effort and then scrap it because it's not good enough, right? So you have everything in between. And we, when you are able to know what they need, what kind of pushes they need, like one kid, you're gonna say, stop, it's enough, it's beautiful. It looks great, turn it in. And for others, you're like, really? What is that that you just did? Did, do you care at all? Or do you just want to get it done? You just want to turn it in. And understanding that, whatever it is, I think is really big because then you can say, okay, you really just want to get it done because you can't do this today. Then don't. It's okay. You know what? Go make a fort under the dining room table and stay there all day if that's what you need to do today. Don't worry about your science homework. 
um, or you might want to give them more extensions, like more that to engage them because that's where they feel comfortable and, and safe in a hard time. So by letting teachers know, like my kid really just can't handle this right now, or this is all she wants to do. Please send more. That's really helpful. And then we're not pushing the kids that really aren't able to take it right now. What is, if there's been something super good that's come out of this whole time period, what is it? What's the best thing you think? Been able to bond with my family in a way that is definitely a gift. I mean, my teenagers actually want to hang out and do stuff. <laughs> Mind blowing. It's I really know. cool. Love it. I'm like, wait, wait, you want to hang out with me? Okay. I'm free. <laughs> it's amazing. I totally agree. What's that? Okay, so what's the worst part? The worst part, um, yeah, the worst part is the fear. The fear um, for your loved ones and not knowing, you know, my mom's only a couple blocks away and, um, you know, we had Mother's Day and, and her birthday and I can't give her a hug and I can't, you know, we can't go to lunch and we can't, I'm worried, right? And what, if you had a crystal ball, I was asked this question, everyone's like, but the crystal ball and what's, what do you think pure speculation is going to be happening in the fall and the spring, fall, winter, spring of this year and the school year? Yeah. I love that question, always. Um, I, I don't, we're not, I personally don't think we're gonna go back to the way that it used to be. Um, I don't think we can because we're looking at a years long battle. Um, and I'm just talking about the pandemic right now. None of the other stuff um, that we have to adapt and it's, through times of rapid change that we adapt more quickly, that's what we're doing now, right? So I think, I think a lot of teachers are gonna retire. I think that these young teachers coming up are already wired to do the work the way that we're doing it now. And that sort of just happened, right? Like, that was happening at some level, well, now it's being put to the test. Maybe we'll have an assistant support the kids live in the classroom while the remote learning happens and that teacher's at home. Some kids won't be able to come in because of their own health conditions or people that they live with. And so those kids might still do remote learning while some of their classmates are actually live in the classroom. So I know our administration is really looking at any possibility to meet the needs of our community. I've heard some colleges are gonna go, like try to squeeze everything in before Thanksgiving um, up until like spring semester. So the kids don't come back between Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday because they're so concerned that, you know, when they come back from school in January, that the virus is gonna be back in play. Have you heard that? The thing is they don't, they don't know when those, um, you know, flatten the curve, right? We don't know, I mean, we can pretty much say we're going to have another curve coming our way after these demonstrations and everyone's Memorial Day weekends, right? Um, so how long is that gonna take to go up and then down? Are we gonna be in good shape for the fall, but then maybe, right? So that prediction could take us to Thanksgiving or maybe by fall it's already, yeah, who knows? What's a message that you want to get out there in the world? Do you have something like, Brewing in your brain that you want to, I, the, the learning thing is cool. I like that. In my role, what is the best thing that I can do right now for my students? And I thought sticking to the curriculum was the way to go in the beginning. And all of my checklists were about that. And then as I, I actually was pretty proud the day I finished my first checklist, I was like, oh my God, I, I actually did things, right? And I was ready to write my next one. And I was like, oh, I think, what are the most important things for kids to know about? Well, right now, I think um, 
how to be self sustaining. And so I'm teaching them how to start their own seeds, how to grow food, how to recognize water quality. How would you filter water if you had to? Um, what does a healthy environment look like? How can you think about your meat consumption and think about some other ways to expand your diet? Like what are the things that we as humanity need to work on and then to bring that back to my students because we're in such a time of urgency. Like, what if this was it? Like, what if I just had now to teach? Well, I better teach the important stuff, right? So that is feed yourself, get yourself water and take care of yourself. It's all about self care. That's what I want to teach, right? The other stuff is bonus. That's amazing. That is so amazing. They are so lucky to have you. No, oh, thanks. And, and like, I get chills. Like, I have chills all over my legs. Um, because that's, like, who thinks about that? Like, that's so important. And that's why you're a teacher. <laughs> that's why you're teaching the youth of, Amer of America. <laughs> all right, I'm recording. <laughs> Looks like Dave's having some uh, technical difficulties. Uh, amazing. <laughs> Hopefully he's not crying. Oh my God, how amazing is she? Like, I'm sorry. Oh. Amazing. So I love what she said at the very end. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to hear, but she's like, what if I, this is the last thing I get to teach? Like, what do I want to teach and what do I want to leave with the students? And she talks all about sustainability, which... I mean, it's just super moving and super power powerful. It really was beautiful. So, so beautiful. And even she mentioned one thing, Stacey, you asked her, like, what was the best part? It, like, I know it's hard to find silver lining and stuff like this, but the fact that she said, like, I'm hanging with my family. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, right. I'm so family oriented, but even in these times, it's just crazy, like kind of, counting your blessings that you really are home and healthy um, with your family. It's just crazy that, I mean, even despite everything that she's going through, like able to see that. Yeah, I totally agree. You know what I think is crazy is like, she said that a bunch of the teachers will quit if they have to go to re yeah. go remote. When I'm hearing from another school that we work with that their teachers will, will quit if they have to come in mm -hmm. to the school. So like, I can just imagine like the administrators and the parents and the, and, the, and the teachers and like everybody trying to figure this whole thing out and there's no direct leadership, like, you know, like this is what you need to do for this, you know what I mean? So everyone's just kind of going ad hoc, like, well, they say this and, you know, the Pennsylvania State is saying this and then the archdiocese is saying this and then, you know what I mean? So like, oh my God, what a mess. A mess, it's a mess. But she does an incredible job. I, I would love to have her as a teacher. I'll go back to fifth grade for it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Just, and, like, you know, and she's like this person, like uh, when, you, when you meet her, she's just so chill. Like it doesn't matter whatever hits her, you know what I mean? She's just chill, you know what I mean? It's all good. And I'm just like, oh God, I wish I could bring my kids over there and have them be her teacher. Yeah. My, so my, I've, I've said in one of our other casts before, but my sister's a teacher. She's a special ed teacher for kindergarten first and second grade. So obviously I feel very passionate about what she was saying. And, and it's interesting to hear a lot of the similarities of the, th of the things that she's saying to what my sisters was saying. And, and I think that what is so striking to me is that these te I didn't, you know, you care about things in your job, right? But these teachers, like mm -hmm. they give a shit about these kids on such a deep, almost like they're their own level yeah. and they do that every year with a, a new batch of kids every single year and they pivot every single year and they are creative in their ways of teaching every single year and get very specialized with each one of their kids and it's you know this is emo like super emotional for them and you know now that they're going back to school it's my, been my sister's first week back and my sister-in-law is also a teacher and it's her first week back and you know, they have just been saying like how devastated they are because they can't have what you're, you know, what you're from saying, like they can't have that hands-on experience that they're so used to. And so hearing her say like, yeah, she thinks some teachers are going to bail. Like, I get it. 
Yeah. And, but also, you know, we, we've had this conversation before about when you get our, and she was touching on it too. When you're faced with these types of situations, you have the op, you have two options, right? It's the attack the problem option or survive it. And for what I've seen since all of this, is it's the people that attack the problem rather than just surviving it that are winding up on top. Selling. Yeah. And, and that's it. It just, you know, we just, the other thing I think too, to your leadership point, and somebody had said this earlier, is that there is like, there is a fundamental difference between leadership and marketing. And it's very important for everybody who is listening, watching, doing whatever to know where that line is, to know where you're being right. fed a bunch of BS by a PR marketing campaign versus actual leadership. Yeah. And to me, and to, to, you know, from everything I've talked to my sisters about the leadership piece of this is who are the people that are going to keep everybody safe and the people's people safe. And if that means that, you know, you have to ha do this weird instruction for another year, hang in there. Yeah. Hang in there. Hang in there. Everybody hang Attack in there. Attack the problem. Don't quit your job. I would hate to hear to, that these teachers are just not going to continue teaching because, you know, this is a little different. Just hang in there. Pivot. Mm -hmm. Pivit with all of us. I hang love that there. so much. And the other, and the last thing I want to ask you and Dave less is when she was talking about how parents approach this, like if their kids don't feel like doing their science homework, are you going to, you know, like pound them to do your, their science homework? Are you going to say, okay, this is a crazy time. What, like, what do you guys think of that? I think she spoke to it in the first half where she said nothing should be required right now. Right. You know, of these kids. Um, there are going to be days that are tougher than others. And, you know, I think you just have to take it as it comes. And, you know, you can't expect too, too much of these kids and you can't go in it with that kind of mentality because they're, you know, this is brand new to them too. So, uh, yeah, that really yeah. stuck with me. Yeah. We're all doing the best we can. You know what I mean? Even the kids. What do you think, Les? Yeah. I mean, it's hard. It's hard for me. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I have a five-year-old and an almost two-year-old. So I'm not strapped with the knowing to have to deal with all this virtual learning and what that entails and the stressors that that causes and, and all of that stuff. So yeah, I completely agree with her. Like, I know my kids are learning by doing activities throughout the day. But can you apply, you know, can you apply, I think what she was saying at the end about teaching them about sustainable living, yeah. you know, those are things that yeah. you don't get taught on an average day basis right. in school. So here are some fundamentals now that are going to be revitalized in these older students that might have died off with, you know, conventional learning in today's technological yeah. world. So that's to me, super exciting. Cause yeah. you know, you, I think, I think a lot of our parents, especially where we live, I think a lot of parents get hung up on like my A plus student isn't getting his A that's what I, yeah. technology yeah. classes and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, Hey, come on. Like take the, you're, we're all going to be on the same plane here. Take the time, let your kids synapses and pathways in their brain, learn some cool new shit that they probably wouldn't have learned otherwise. It's only going to be a blip in the radar. Like everybody just has to hold on. We just got to like hang in there. And if it's a new normal, it's a new normal. We'll, we'll adjust it. We always do. Yes. You know, we always adjust to it. So you guys, thank you very much. For thank listening. you. Thank you. This was an amazing. Big thanks to your friend. Yeah. yeah. I will let her know. Thank you. Kim, All for teachers out there. We love you. We love you. Reach out to the teachers you know. And stay stay. Teachers. Hey. And teachers do, oh, one, I gotta do one quick sidebar. Teachers do Amazon wish lists. We should oh, definitely go on. And if you can good. purchase some things for your teacher friends, Amazon wish list to help them out during this time, go do it. Teachers need, need our help. Love yeah, it. and if any teachers are watching this, they wanna tell us other ways to help. Yes. Tell us other ways to help. Follow this. You know, we'll, we'll, we're with you. Go get it. Love it. Love Thanks, it. guys. Thank Everyone you. Close Thank us out. You. Thanks, guys, for a great morning cast episode. We will see you next time. <laughs> no pressure. Thank you, everyone, for listening to today's morning cast. We loved having our morning coffee with you. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and turn that notification button on to make sure you don't miss any episodes. Until then, keep hustling and pour yourself another cup of joe.